Hello. Oh my god. I got my hair cut. I know I love it. You look so like Broadway chic. <laughs> Leanne Cope, where are you? Yeah, I know. Seriously. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm like, oh my goodness, you look so beautiful. I just like Ooh. got done finished class. What else do I have to do in quarantine for? Like, right. Okay, I have somewhere to go, right? <laughs> I know. This is like the social event of my week, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know, scheduling these interviews, I'm like, feel so popular and like, busy. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's jump right in. Callie, welcome to my talk show. <laughs> um, so when, tell us when you started dancing, how you got into it, and maybe someone who you looked up to when you first started dancing. Um, wow, well, boy, it's really terrible. Uh, I started dancing when I was three years old, um, just like one, like one of those things that your parents put you in, and I kind of never stopped, so um, I would say I probably got, my parents knew that I was going to be dancing a long time by the time I was like seven, which is when I went to Main State Ballet, um, so my first, I don't know, real class in the sense that I knew I was going to keep going with it was with Miss Anne Marie. Um, but then my first, what I would say is like my first real teacher who like really cracked down at us was um, Fred Bernier. So I would credit him with, I had him for three years. Yeah. I had him with a group of people I ended up staying with for a while. Um, but I would credit him with like keeping me in ballet because he was the one that really introduced me to like how I know ballet now to be, um, which is like the hard work and like, I don't know, drilling us with technique, et cetera. Um, so yeah. Yeah, he definitely taught us a lot. The drilling of the technique, like, <laughs> this I is still remember. <laughs> yeah, I still remember some of the things he said, like, to this day, so. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's great. Um, so let's talk about, we're, we would be doing recital this week. Oh, I'm um, so sad about that, too. Like, I'm particularly bummed. Um, I know. Yeah. I'm, like, so sad. Can you talk a little bit about how you started teaching and like that process of like transferring from the student to the teacher and what you like about teaching and yeah so wow okay um so I started teaching last year officially um once I graduated high school I got to teach my first year of college and I mean I just had an interest in it I had been helping madame sort of like uh what's the word unofficially or um casually I guess like I would take class with her and she would just basically make me be a teacher assistant <laughs> um which was which is fun um but that that's kind of what sparked my interest of when you guys formally put um like the the teacher program together um when your dad put that together I signed up for it because I was my experience had been good so far and I I liked it um and I actually up until I started teaching didn't didn't dislike children but didn't think that that would be like something that would give me like I don't know a lot of as much joy as it did and I yeah. I was kind of of the mindset oh I want to teach older kids I want to be able to like basically do what Fred did to me and be like you know here are the yeah. here are the technical basics you need they already know yeah. the foundation stuff yeah like you can you can kind of push them and I was really happy to find out that I really love teaching little kids I don't think I God bless Adrian Pelletier. I don't think, and like Miss Julia, I don't think I could teach like the three-year-olds, but the first graders and like, you know, I teach, currently I was teaching first through fourth grade and I really liked um, the little like success, as you know, I'm sure with your kids, like getting them to like turn in the correct direction or like use the correct foot is like a big deal. If they can go to the bathroom, I will teach them. <laughs> like Definitely. if they know how to use <laughs> Yeah, if they can, like, walk down the hall without, like, yeah. getting lost, that's, like, a whole other battle, but, you know. I know, I know. I'm, like, so bummed about recital, but. Well, and, like, this is supposed to be, like, last year, so I went really hard on recital. I was, like, done, too, and I made, like, wands, and I was so ready. <laughs> I know, yeah. you had that little Harry Potter dance. I got to see that. I saw that one time. Kaylin, Kaylin's dad just sent me a video that he had recorded, um, during one of the last like run-throughs in the theater and um he just sent me the recording on google drive and i was like you oh, miss so my fun. students i wanted to record my students like on the last week that we were there because we had just finished the dance i was like oh i should record mm -hmm. it and then i was like we got so much time and then all of a sudden we're like gone I was like, oh. <laughs> so 
on. I was yeah. like, oh. oh no, I wish I had recorded more of them, but I did send, I, I was just like feeling so good. I love the costumes I picked up. I was pick, picked out. I was so excited. Damn, I know. Tell us a little bit about, so you went to SAB for mm -hmm. a summer and then Miami City Ballet for a summer. Tell us about how you like wanted to go there and what the experience was like. Um, so they were similar and very different. Um, the, I mean, what really got me into SAB was just thinking like, oh, there's, there's ballet. I don't know. And, and because I grew up in Main State Ballet, I was like, SAB. So I auditioned a bunch of years for SAB, finally got in. Um, I was one of the oldest um, kids in the, in the program. Like I was with the, the oldest age group, I guess. And so that was actually a, like a real blessing because I think there was a lot more competitiveness in the younger levels to like get into the year round program, um, which I know Trevor has mentioned like is definitely a thing with the younger kids, like kids yeah. his age, all going like kind of crazy with their Yumiko <laughs> leotards and their yeah. like, dead. They just want it so bad. Yeah. Yeah. But like I was going there definitely just to see like more of the world, just like just to meet other people that like it did what I did and loved ballet and so um I think that it was really a blessing that I got to go later in life because I appreciated like I got to go when Jules was doing its 25th oh, wow. in yeah. whatever the whatever the um 50 I I can't I'm I, so it been no I don't think it was that late well it was, was 1960s it? yeah so it would have been 50 yeah 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 the yeah crazy but I got to go see that so like it all, all the stars kind of aligned that that was a very like magical experience um got to meet like Darcy Kissler like my mind was just yeah I don't know being older definitely made me appreciate like a lot of the just like simple things like just getting to go to shows was crazy um I was living and with you that summer yeah. <laughs> and my Miami was um kind of came about the idea that I enjoyed SAB and just again from the mainstay connections um mm -hmm. the SD twins um knowing that they danced there, I was like, well, I guess I might as well find a program I can go to now that I'm old. <laughs> and so I went to Miami, um, got to Miami, went um, very different because SAB is all in one building. And so I kind of was inside a lot more than I would have preferred, even though it was absolutely fine. But um, Miami was nice. And Sarah said this to me, I think one of them said this to me, that Miami's nice because you get like a real summer. And so we'd be done with classes actually with time to like go outside. Yeah. And so I would go, um, I was living with a friend I met in New York and then got to stay in her apartment for the summer. And so we would go to the beach after class, which was really, really fun. Um, That's so nice. So two very different like experiences, um, but definitely both of them very similar, both balancing programs. Um, yeah. yeah. It must have been nice to be in the oldest group because now you have friends that are like in the company right oh oh yeah so one of the guys that was in one of my that was in my summer like a uh, choreographic thing in um at sab he's now a core member at miami with his girlfriend who was in my class in miami and so they're dating they are core members and he just he's been doing like principal roles this year it's insane he's zachary catazaro's brother younger oh, brother yeah but so he's like tall and like yeah, beautiful obviously yeah, beautiful. but um <laughs> so funny such a funny guy but um he he got to debut like the prince from firebird this year he got to do the second uh toccata i think from stravinsky violin oh. with mother like prince, like crazy and i was like i know that guy <laughs> Yeah, like it's so crazy. Know of, but like, you know him, know him. Yeah, like, we follow each other on Instagram, crazy stuff. Like, yeah, that kind of thing is insane to me. Um, Who was, like, yeah. one of your favorite teachers at SAB and then Miami? I mean, they're all um, amazing. I, they're all perfect. <laughs> they're all amazing. They're, they're just so funny. I think Suki was the one that probably liked me. <laughs> liked, <laughs> I, she, she paid the most attention to me, I guess. Like, so I, I liked that because I, felt like I got more out of it because I felt they, it was more personalized I guess um and they were things I, I needed to hear so I really liked her because I felt like she kind of got the things that I needed to fix but um I mean you can't not love Darcy Kistler the thing about Darcy Kistler's class though is that like she is born with just beautiful turnout and legs and feet and 
we always would joke that I don't think she understands that ballet is like hard for other people. <laughs> so she would just make you do like these crazy things where she, yeah, she'd like mark a whole Raimonda variation and like once through, like kind of like Madame does. Yeah. But, but she would just mark a whole variation and just say, okay, go and just have one of the year round students do it like once. And you're just like, uh, uh, so she like luckily thank you mainstay ballet i had done a lot of these variations like in summer <laughs> but I, she had us do the hopping one with the arabesque oh you, like did, the, yeah, the, you did that one i did that one and she had us do that like the first day of variations class like once through and was just like doing the arms and she was like these are hops we were like what <laughs> yeah yeah so you're an crazy. Arabesque hopping on one foot and moving your arms slowly across the floor she's just like marking only the arms and she's like these are all hops just, just, and we're, we're okay, okay, yeah, yeah, and, yep, yep, <laughs> and, the lowest you can go, <laughs> yeah, and, but, and then Susie Pilar was hysterical, I just think, I would love to hear what your grandmother has stories about, because she's just so funny, I know, she, we have, like, a quote book from the summer of her saying, like, plie will save your life, except in a fire, don't plie in a fire, and, like, <laughs> she told a girl to not, like go dragging her baked potato across the floor and to point her foot like just stuff so funny and like she just does it without thinking I think yeah. but um yeah and I got to have Jonathan Stafford actually because he was still like on the faculty okay. and his class was awesome actually he yeah. was super chill he reminded me a lot of your dad and very like like alignment calm do mm -hmm. things correctly and simply kind of it was very zen I really I, I needed that like with <laughs> everything else going on yeah. he was he was like a nice Nice. change he was one of our only male teachers we had too but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then I guess let's see who did I like from Miami there's like a girl named uh, shoot Kareen 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 no Kareen <laughs> um Kareen she she's like very she was like shorter than me but she was like I don't know firecracker of a lady yeah. but she would make us do a Daggio and center on point like just crazy she was yeah just crazy combinations and she'd just be like do it <laughs> like okay just expect just, yeah. yeah but um uh, trying to think else yeah no I mean all of it was really good partnering class was really fun yeah yeah, yeah. oh that's great let's uh let's switch gears let's talk dream roles so you got to do sugar plum that was always the dream here. role yeah so what I know you have been wanting to be sugar plum forever it's like one of your let's quickly <laughs> we go. Um, um, dream roles dream yeah. Plum, yeah sugar plum was always the dream role just like sentimental wise um just because Merrill stage honestly um I think if we were doing more shows at Merrill which I mean I I love getting to do lots of shows and stuff because it means we get more casts but um I think just knowing that I would get to do it at Merrill like knowing like there's just something really special about looking out into the audience and how vast it is when you look out when you're on Merrill. Um, it feels a lot bigger. So I think I think getting to do the pot de, you know, just me and one other person and just mm -hmm. feeling like I was flying essentially, uh, yeah. especially during those like lifts, was was really special and cool. And also just I mean I have so many friends at Maine State because I've grown up here. So you know it's always special when a new person gets to do it. And so. Um, having everyone come up to me and be like, it's your sugar plum day. Yeah. It's like, yay. Um, so that was just like a special, like, I don't know, just backstage, you know, in general, that whole, the whole experience was just very, very good. Um, and, and like, you did the kitty show last year, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was, that was good. Um, <laughs> I had kind of like a rough go of a couple of the music, <laughs> like, goes of it. Um, we, <laughs> kitty show last year, I couldn't hear the, like, whole beginning because the kids were just like saying bravo brava yeah. it's like every year whatever I was doing for kitty show they would choose that right before that to tell the kids like bravo brava like yeah <laughs> and so when I did do for kitty show they told them right before flowers and then last year they told them right before sugar club and I was like okay okay so. good can you and wait then, to Spanish? Can you yeah, and then we went on that talk show we went on good day main and my music stopped <laughs> and then my dress rehearsal the music stopped in the variation so like I just didn't get to run the variation with music like I don't know three out of however many times but still it was just I just got used to like how roughly how fast to go because I just 
I don't know. The orca I, I remember saying on Good Day Maine to like backstage after to you, well, there's no way the orc is just gonna just stop playing. And then dress rehearsal came. Carla's like, stop. <laughs> oh god. Oh I know. Oh, that was <laughs> that was so bad. Oh, and yeah. um you started rehearsing for Sugar Plum in the summer, right? Yeah, I was just telling um so I met um my boyfriend Silas uh the eighth which was a Monday because we were teaching a computer programming class together. And I found out that Thursday that I was doing um, Sugar Plum. So I found out like what, the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 11th. And I started the next Monday. <laughs> so I was rehearsing like mid July through okay. November. And I remember thinking to myself, huh, this has been like what, three, three months of work? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel, were you glad you started in the summer so you could feel? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would have, like, changed it. I mean, like, more rehearsal is always better. I mean, I think there's always, like, a last minute push, so it's, like, hard to say how much is, like, but, I mean, I I felt really comfortable by the time I went on stage, so I can't say, like, I would have wanted more or less or anything like that. Yeah, you were very calm before. (laughs) Your grandmother said I was more calm to do Sugar Plum than, um, like, Midsummer. (laughs) Yeah, you were, you were, like, too calm. Like, we were all, like, Callie, you should be freaking out. We're all freaking out. I was, like, dancing behind stage during snow. I was, like, doing snow in my... <laughs> you guys were, like, sit down. <laughs> you know, like, Callie, take a beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of other dream roles, though, I know Swan Lake was always one I really wanted to do. Um, just because, like, I always liked... I actually liked White Swan. <laughs> you should, like, kind of a freak like that. Um and then Aurora was, I mean, you understand Aurora is like, yeah. yeah. So. What's, what's another dream role that you like wanted and you got to do? Uh, what did I got to do? Actually, I remember thinking when I watched, Han- I mean, not Hansel Girl, Alice in Wonderland before casting him out, I was thinking, I want to be Buttercup. Yeah. <laughs> and that was actually one I really wanted to do. I mean, Dewdrop, of course, like there are a lot of, there are a lot of Nutcracker ones, like basically yeah. everything I was doing towards the end um like flutes do sugar yeah. that's like I mean snow doesn't really count because that's just like fun once you <laughs> get older but um in terms of like I don't know solo dream roles those were all on the list yeah um yeah, yeah. I felt the same about buttercup well we got to buttercup that. was so fun I just wish I could do it now because Me I can do because I can actually like turn with a partner <laughs> I I was watching a clip the other day. I was like, who <laughs> let me do that? Like with my like those my feet were like flopping around. I was like, I need to do that again. I was wearing the weirdest shoes too at the time. I was wearing like Capizio like Donatellas. I don't they were fine, but I mean I would much prefer to do literally anything I have done in the past with like the shoes I wear now. Yeah. Would much prefer that. Yeah. But. So let's talk about your relationship with physics. <laughs> so how did you come, like, fall in love with physics? And then mm. how is how are you taking that and with ballet going hand in hand? And- it was funny. I kind of, peop, um, there's a woman named Merritt Moore on, I mean, on Instagram, but I mean, just in general. Um, and she's kind of known as the, the physics, her, her Instagram is actually called physics on point but she's like the physics ballerina um in like mainstream pop culture if you will um she's like gonna be an astronaut probably she like went to harvard and then oxford for physics crazy crazy brilliant woman (laughs) um but i remember just her talking about how physics how we think about how energy moves and or interacts with things um how that kind of influenced how she thinks about dance and i remember reading it like a few years ago and being like yeah I guess my knowledge of physics kind of gives me like a common sense but I wasn't quite at the point where I was using it like I don't know in my muscles like on a on a really like acute um I don't know productive scale I guess Mm -hmm. and then I remember when I came back from Yale actually for from a conference we had actually talked about the physics of dance um and she she literally was talking about how different styles um, have different physics to them, like how you prep for a turn, how balance sheet actually is the most energy efficient um, preparation because you're maximizing your, like, um, basically the change in radius, if you will. Um, 
but you're getting you're getting the most bang for your buck is what she said and so I remember coming back from that conference and the first class I had back I hadn't danced in like a week because I'd been sick and then gone and all that stuff and I remember feeling the difference of being able to like put it in action as I was doing it and not just kind of like generally knowing how it worked but being able to like apply it and that was really good (laughs) um that was like a really good feeling of like I remember I felt my arabesque not pinch as much like I remember feeling my turns were more consistent like I felt more in control of my spot it was it was Mm -hmm. magic like we were probably so different parts of your life for so long that when you put them together yeah yeah and I think it just took time to like get comfortable dancing honestly like I think oh for a while I was one of those people and I still tend to be slightly that I I can be not not even like stiff but I can tend to like stress myself out like mentally Mm -hmm. a little bit and so being able to like calmly apply things Mm -hmm. has been like a has been a, a challenge or like I guess just a a thing I've been working on so I think once I got to that point of clear thinking while I was dancing especially in class just getting really really calm because if you don't practice being calm in class you can't possibly be calm on stage is what I found out so (laughs) once I got to that point of being able to try things out in class and feel like I was going for things it made me more comfortable changing and tweaking things on my body yeah yeah so what's like um, I know this, but the, the viewers don't, maybe, um, your future with ballet and physics and how, talk about your point you project and yeah, excited about yeah. that. <laughs> um, so I worked this last semester at USM, so I've been going to the University of Southern Maine, and that was really great because I got to stay in dance, um, but I knew there were going to be opportunities I needed to kind of be in a city or just outside of Maine to do because as much as I love Maine it currently is not as developed as like a tech you know city area whatever (laughs) hub if you will like as I would like um so I I'm gonna go away to college hopefully in the fall if the virus goes up in time and so I've been working on a project with one of my professors to design point shoes so I kind of got to combine not just physics but like engineering and just aesthetics I got to basically I had to draw a point you and like you wouldn't point you are so pretty like you don't think they're gonna be hard to draw and then you realize they're not symmetrical and you realize they have weird angles and curves and it's like how the heck do you put this into a program that can basically only draw on three different planes like circles and lines and then you have to kind of give it curves so you can like make it three-dimensional like it's just it was like a whole new problem, but it was very good, and I got to test some materials. So I'm actually working with my professor right now to get me some prototypes for Shanks. So we'll see. Um, I ran some simulations and stuff, and hopefully, in less than ten years, maybe ten years, we'll see. They'll be they'll be on the market. We'll see how that goes. So. That's so awesome. I'm, you kept sending me like updates. You're like, like two hours later, you're like it's almost there, and then two hours later. <laughs> It, and it looks really stupid because at one point it's just like these two-dimensional like flat like basically foot you know outline of a foot like shank pieces and it's like this took me so long you have no idea like it took me like three days to build the actual like satin covering just like the shape of the like maybe even a week it it was like a really weird shape to try to draw like it's yeah. so above my head and a lot of our heads I could not <laughs> The drawing is not that crazy. It's just finicky. Like SolidWorks just does not enjoy certain shapes. Point shoes being one of them. So, <laughs> yeah. So oh, I'm hoping to take that project anyways. Um, wherever I go next, yeah. I don't know where I'll be yet. But. We'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> so how how are you staying sane during this? quarantine time (laughs) yeah I mean I try to exercise every day whether it's dancing whether it's going for a run um I've zoom called a bunch of friends and we've um actually put on like a YouTube video and like done the same workout together (laughs) and that's kind of fun and I actually Trevor's been on some of the calls and it's just so funny because we'll be in the middle of an ab exercise and he'll be like Kelly you're killing me what have you done and like just the commentary (laughs) really makes it like more enjoyable actually so 
I think feeling like I'm having shared experiences with others is really good. Also, speaking of Trevor, we cooked the same dinner for our families one night. Aww. So that was really fun. Um, and I, yeah, I call like Silas every day. Um, yeah. Same time. We watch, we watch Netflix or Hulu or whatever together. <laughs> so just having like some sort of schedule, feeling like I have something going on is, is yeah. very good. Um, yeah. I'm lucky that theoretically my internship should be starting this week. So mm-hmm. I, I will have things to keep me busy in the right. near future. Right. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I feel bad for those who are just stuck in their houses like mm-hmm. all summer with nothing to do. Especially but, in like cities. Oh, because like, yeah, because yeah. part of the draw of the city is to be able to go out. And if you can't go out and, and you're just you stuck in a tiny out. apartment, yeah, yeah, I didn't even, yeah, we are lucky to be in a nice green state. Yeah. What, what advice do you have for people or young dancers like at home? working during this time oh working like in terms of coronavirus coping mechanisms yeah um I would say yeah I think moving your body is really important um actually one of the things I hope I might get into is some what's called biomechanical engineering where I would hope to like I don't know one of the dreams I would hope is to be able to make something that would help people with like physical disabilities to be able to move more like some sort of assisted like you know whatever um not mechanism but i product i you get you get the idea but something that would help them be able to be more mobile and so someone who has some sort of um restrictions on movement because of injuries however they may be born otherwise and get people who couldn't otherwise move more that like you know more than just like in a wheelchair more than like Mm -hmm. so i would love to someday help people either with that to get more people moving or people who have injuries to give them some sort of like injury reinforcement so they can move, they can get back to moving quicker. Um, Dance is really, and and then the lack of dance because of this quarantine has really uh, made me know that I want to be moving like wherever I am. (laughs) Yeah. No. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that you, like, always want to use what you know to help others, you know. We're hanging in there. (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm sure with all the live classes, you guys are, like, Yeah, those are, those are actually good, because it makes you put a smile on your face, and, (laughs) you know, move. Everyone's kind of, yeah, everyone's kind of just figuring it out as they go. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to have a routine, so I've been, like, you know, you know me. I like to cross things off my yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, my planner. I should, yeah. Actually, I have been using it because I've had so much craziness going on with finals. and Yeah. yeah. Life has continued to be busy, even though I am stuck inside, essentially. Yeah. Is that a gathering? Oh. Okay. Pusinella Variations, actually, is the, the, when it premiered at the fall gala, that's the costumes I got fitted to first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the, I don't know if it's Indiana, but it's like the stupid, like, yellow unitard <laughs> one. That was on me first. You're welcome. That's- and then, I think it's the Tyler Peck one. And, like, the Sarah Mearns ones. Because I remember getting fit for tutus, and, like, one of them was, like, crooked. And I was like, this is stupid. Why are they making, like, I still don't love the costumes, but it's cool to, cool. it's cool, cool to gotten to see the costume shop. but. They, I still stand by it. I I just can't imagine trying to like dance with it. Like, yeah. I feel like, like I'm all, I already dance like this. Like, what do you do with the, like? I don't know. I'd feel weird if there's just like one half a tutu and not like the other side. I don't know, man. Yeah. Harry Potter dance, and I was just like, I miss them all so much. Oh my gosh, they're so precious. I like. Uh, that's like the biggest thing to me is missing recital because. Because I was really excited to, like, be able to say goodbye to my students and, like, you know, prep them for it and be like, I'm not going to be here. And, like, right. sad. My mom was like, you would have been sad to miss recital any year. And I was like, yeah, but it's like I missed six years in one because I had six classes. <laughs> it was, like, particularly sad. I don't know. I know. I, I'm going to email my students. Yeah. We were also in Disney. Um, a year ago. A year ago today. I was thinking about that too. When someone was like, "Oh yeah, it should be settled week," I was like, "I was in Florida last." Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for talking with me today. Yeah. 
Sorry, but Zoom is like being silly. I know. It's okay. I have mad editing skills. Okay. So, yeah. I will. I will watch the final print. <laughs>